What's happening? I think it's just atmospheric turbulence. But engine malfunction detected. Thrust is fluctuating and falling. Ariel, can we still land? Negative. Insufficient thrust for vertical landing. Can we abort back to orbit? Negative. Insufficient thrust. Please tell me there's an alternative. We're coming down way too fast. Extending control surfaces. Attempting to level descent for horizontal landing. Ariel. You're going to try to glide to a landing. Affirmative. But that's thick forest down there. And this ship isn't designed to land like an airplane anyway. This maneuver cannot be accurately classified as a landing, but it should enable crew survival. What does that mean? Crash. A crash is what it means. Affirmative. What was that? We brushed the forest canopy for a moment and bounced. Hold on, we're about to hit it again. You okay, Marcus? I'm fine. They say any landing you can walk away from is a good one. And we weren't going to be able to reuse the ship anyway. We should be able to salvage what we need. I think I can pull the radio out and take it with us. Not like we can call anyone anyway. But I like those messages from Earth. Makes me feel a bit less cut off. More like we're still part of the same universe as Matilda and Earth. We are part of the same universe. Well, it's nice to have somebody out there who can call us up and tell us so. Anyway, let's get that hatch open. After you, Marcus. No, I took the first step on Eddington. Your turn now. Be careful. Remember how heavy you are now. Hey, you've put on some weight yourself. Okay, here goes. Quietplease.org presents 253 Matilda. In the early 22nd century, the crewed asteroid 253 Matilda left the solar system on an interstellar mission. Generations later, after 114 years, a new star system stretches out in front of them. Episode 19, Miranda. Where are the toxicology reports coming? We lost a few tests in the crash, but what I've got is showing all the vegetation is good. Huh. Isn't that odd? Shouldn't there be at least some poisonous plants? It fits with the other odd thing I've been noticing. No insects, no animal life at all so far. So the plants haven't had anything try to eat them that they need to poison. Should we start eating them? Might as well. I'm not going to learn anything else before our rations run out. Hello there, Explorer. Marissa. Marissa! On behalf of everyone back on 253 Matilda, we just want to pass along our thanks for all the risks you're taking on our behalf. We hope the future finds you well. Flynn set us down in the year 2207 as you'd measure it for you to hear today, and Earth is happy to pass that along. That's a new kind of uncanny valley. So what's on the agenda for today? More exploration? Let's pack everything we can and lug it down to the river. We'll build a raft, tie everything we can to it, and head downstream. Beats trying to hack through the jungle forever, I suppose. We'll cover a lot more distance and have a much wider view. Maybe we'll discover an ideal spot for a long-term camp, or even something more interesting and unexpected. I feel like I'm adjusting to gravity. Hopefully I can be less of a burden and more of a help than I've been the last week. I could get used to this. 
It sure is a breathtaking view. As Miranda's acting government, we'll have to declare this a national park. River Gorge National Park. If only we'd been able to send videos and hollows back. People on Earth would be competing for a chance to be settlers here. Oh, they'll come anyway. It'll probably take a few centuries, but they'll come. Uh, step out onto what they think is a new world, and they'll see your national park sign. And our skeletons beside it, maybe. What's that? Uh, on top of the ridge up there, just coming into view around the bend. That can't be natural. Those look like buildings of a sort, uh, only... They're covered in something. Vines, I guess? Probably dead ones from the color and kind of decayed look. We're coming up on it. Let's get to shore. You want to go up to it? Don't you? It is what we came here for. Well, yeah, but... Jeez, that's going to be quite a climb. No, okay, that that's good. The raft should be safe here. Considering we've seen no animal life. But whatever built that town up there... Probably has no interest in stealing our supplies. Because they've got better. Let's just bring food and water. Everything else can stay here. I can fit the radio too. Okay, let's go. Over here it looks like the path of least resistance. <sighs> you're, you're doing fine, Amadi. We're almost halfway up. Hold up a minute. I don't have your injectionated muscles. I need some water. <coughs> Shit! Did you lose something back there? A radio. No chance to get it? It's in a bunch of pieces down in the river now. A radio isn't a very useful item on this planet anyway. It was our last connection to the rest of humanity. Now we really are completely alone, forever. It's not humanity you check it for every morning. It's Marissa. True. And not another transmission she relayed through Earth decades ago, either. You were still expecting news from Matilda. I've kept myself going by believing that one day I'll hear her voice telling us everything worked out for them. It's been nearly four months. You wouldn't have been able to send a reply anyway at this distance. That wouldn't matter. Knowing they took back control and escaped would be enough, wouldn't it? Well, I, I prefer to keep my hopes realistic. I hope they're safely on their way to Earth as well-treated captives. Now let's go. Break's over. <laughs> You made it. We've reached the top. Wow. I've never seen anything like this. No human ever has. I'd estimate most of these things are around 10 meters high, and a lot wider. Seems they're organized in concentric circles. At least it looks that way from here. Still not sure what they are, though. Except, obviously, structures of some kind that look long abandoned. Let's go into one and find out. They all seem to have open archways, instead of doors. Uh, maybe the doors were made of something that decomposed quicker. The 
This is so odd. Marcus! This isn't a building covered in dead vines. Then what do you mean? Feel the wall! Stick your hand all the way in. I see what you mean. The vines themselves are the structure. It's an organic building. Imagine growing the structures you need instead of constructing them. I wonder how it's done. Maybe they have different seeds that grow into different sorts of structures. And I wonder who they are and where they are. I don't think they've been around here for a while. Looks that way, but how would we really know what it's supposed to look like? The smell is, is pretty odd. Yeah, kind of like rotting fruit. Huh, have a look at this. What is it? Looks like electrical wiring. Hmm, it does. Like looking inside the wall of a decaying house. Except the decay seems more organic here. Even the wires look more grown than installed. But I can't imagine how that'd work. I wish we could see how it looked in its prime. We're wandering through a ghost town without ever having seen a live town. How old would you guess this place is? It's really hard to say. I mean, not knowing the typical decay rates, but if this building was alive, it might have died only a year ago. I mean, the walls have seen better days, but everything is still standing, and you'd expect organic material to decompose pretty quick. So their civilization could still be around somewhere else, even if it abandoned this particular place. Well, who knows? We don't have much in the way of facts to base our guesses on. Uh, what I do know for a fact is I can't do any more walking today. It's just about sunset anyway. We'll camp here for the night. In this building? Why not? It's the best shelter we're going to get. Unless you want to climb back down to where we left the tent. Okay, I call this corner. This thing growing out of the wall here looks soft enough to make a decent bed. Been dozing off at work again, Amari? Oh. Amari, what are you doing back here? Explain yourself. I, I just. I, I wanted. The, 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 not my fault. You're fired. Again. In fact, Detective Sitang, arrest this man for treason. Hold out your hands, Amari. B but I didn't mean to. What's going on here? Mayor, I'm innocent. Help me. How'd the traitor get back here? His alien friends must have given him a lift back so he could finish the job and kill us all. We're not going to let you do that, Amadi. Tie him up. Hold still. But I'm already in handcuffs. Why do you need to tie me up? Can't be too careful with a traitor. Put a gag on him, too so we don't have to listen to more of his pitiful claims that it's not his fault he betrayed us. Good idea. You know what? Yes, Dad? This isn't good enough for what he's done. This calls for the death penalty. Agreed. But we should make this legal. I already sent for Judge Lee. Ah, here she is now. You're just in time, Judge. Guilty. I sentence you to immediate death by strangulation. That's something I've wanted to do to him for decades. All together, let's grab his throat and squeeze. Hold as still as you can. I I'm trying to cut it off you. Thanks, Marcus. That was a close one. Do you, th do you think that's the structure's idea of a security system? 
designed to strangle intruders while we sleep. Looks more like a parasite feeding on the dead husk. Maybe a sort of cross between mistletoe, a, a Venus flytrap, and a, maybe a boa constrictor. Well, one thing is certain. What's that? Not all the plant life on Miranda is harmless, after all. Where are we headed today, Marcus? North. Any particular reason? The sea shouldn't be too far, and it shouldn't be as hot there. Well, I'm all for getting out of heat. Let's go. Top of this hill should give us a good vantage point. We'll plan our direction from there. There. <sighs> you coming, Amadi? You know I'm not so good at this gravity. I'll be up there in a minute. Wow. What a view. And well, that, that's amazing. That's incredible. You've got to see this. What is it? What do you see? The other side slopes down to a flat plain along the ocean shore. And, and there's a city. A city? It looks a lot like the one we explored yesterday. Only it's bigger. And it's alive. Alive? Come on, let's get down there. Watch out! Look at that thing. Marcus, I think it's intelligent. Look at that ornamentation on the torso. Must be the species responsible for the city. Yeah, it, uh, it reminds me of a triffid. What's a triffid? From a 20th century John Wyndham story, Walking Plants. It's the first thing we've seen on this planet that moves like an animal. But those leaf things appear to be part of the body. So, not sure if it's more plant or animal. Maybe they get energy from both photosynthesis and food. Well, let's try not to be its food. Back off slowly. Look, they're, they're rising up out of the grass all around us. Looks like we're surrounded. Probably just curiosity. I don't think they mean us any harm. I remember the last aliens you said that about, but it's not like my knife is going to hold them all off, so we better try to cooperate with them until we find out more. Unless I've missed my guess, they want us to walk with them now. I think they're taking us to that building next to that giant concave structure. It looks like a gigantic satellite dish. An organic base, but a uh, metal finish. Maybe that's exactly what it is. We're aliens to them. It only makes sense to take us to a space program facility. Well, let's hope it's not to be locked in cages of specimens for observation and dissection. I don't sense any hostility. Neither do most lab rats, so it's too late. Seems we're this town's primary entertainment at the moment. So this is what the buildings look like when they're alive. It's amazing. I wish I could ask them what they're doing with us. Learning their language, or however it is they're communicating, is going to be quite a challenge. It's uh, kind of like being Columbus. Back in 1492, only harder. I mean, how do you translate where there's nobody in the world who speaks both languages? Or any common third language? Or even a similar language family? Marcus, those are 2D video screens. Not like ours, but the same purpose. You know, I think they want us to watch something. Well, what? We know this is a long shot, that our signal may be too weak where you may never hear this for any number of other reasons. But we had to try. There's a few people here who'd like to have a brief word with you guys. Chief Botanist John Stone here. That's a long story. Amadi, I never got a chance to tell you how sorry I am for what happened to you. If I hadn't been negligent, 
things might have turned out very differently for you. This is Eva Hernandez. I didn't know either of you that well, but I know what it's like to go through hardships and get hurt and have to carry on. And I'm rooting for you two to persevere through whatever pioneer challenges you're facing. This is Larissa Flint. Dad, I'm sorry we never had the relationship we should have. It wasn't all your fault. Some of it was me not wanting to forgive you or believe you could change. Tam Peters here. I trust we made the right choice by sending you, Marcus. I was sure you'd be the best prepared to deal with the stresses of the mission. And Amadi, I wish you were still here because it would have been fascinating to document a case as unique as yours. Hello, Amadi. It's your old partner, Iran Yacite. I may not have always shown it. I may have resented sharing the job with you sometimes, when there was hardly enough work for one of us, let alone both. But I want you to know, I really came to respect you over the years we worked together. Jim O'Hara, I'm gonna be honest, no sense bullshitting you. You both know I never liked either of you, but I do respect what you're doing. And I hope you've made some incredible discoveries that make everything we've been through worth it. Farah Tojo speaking. I envy you both for getting to live and work in that compact marvel of a ship we built. And for the challenge of trying to maintain and repair technology over the years to come on a primitive world. Wish I could be there to help. Chief Lawrence here. It's been my privilege to study the Tau Ceti system the last few years. I have so many theories. So many guesses about what you might be experiencing on Eddington or Miranda right now. But you two probably learn more things every single day you live there than I can in a lifetime through telescopes. I just wish you could tell us about it. This is Sergei Kochigan. Marcus, I was heartbroken when I heard you got picked for the mission instead of me. I kept hoping you'd change your mind and back out so I could replace you. You're having the adventure of a lifetime out there. And if it's a struggle sometimes, don't ever forget that a lot of us would give anything to be in your shoes. This is Acting Mayor Peters. We've been through a lot up here. We've made sacrifices and we've lost a lot of people. You know what kept us going through the darkest days? You did. You were our purpose and you're our legacy. We're out here to explore the galaxy and you're the ones doing that on the ground for us. If you've been successful, if you've made discoveries, then our purpose was achieved and everything we lost was worth it. Thank you. We've encoded our projected course and speed in the hope that somehow, some way, you can find the transmitter power to send a reply. Hoping this message found you well, this is 253 Matilda, signing off. That one's trying to tell us something. I think they're trying to offer us a chance to send a reply. Mm, I think you're right. Marissa, Larissa, everybody else up there, we're okay. It, it, it's been a struggle, but we're through the worst of it. I can see myself making a good life here. I have a purpose now. This mission has changed me exactly how I needed it to. I miss you, and this was the best decision I ever made. I didn't want to make this trip. It wasn't my decision. I was used, and I was mad about it for a long time. And I've really missed you, Marissa. But now, a part of me is thankful for what's happened, because it's been an incredible adventure. We've seen things you wouldn't believe. Magnificent eclipses, awe-inspiring storms, incredible canyons. Whole cities that are grown, not built. Life forms we could never have imagined. And we've discovered new depths in ourselves we never knew we had until circumstances brought it out. We'll try to send you full and detailed mission reports later, once we're settled in, assuming we can make our host understand what we want to do. For now, we wish you safe travels. Marcus and I were just the beginning, just the first step to establishing humanity among the stars. Now it's up to you to keep it going, to explore as much of the galaxy as you can, and to pass on that mission to the next generation.
You've been listening to 253 Matilda, episode 19, Miranda. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Miram. Marcus Flint is Glenn Haskell. Detective Arash Amadi is Paul Neerum. The Earth Controller is Mary Ann Stanick. The Computer is Microsoft Azure Neural Voice Jenny. Mission Specialist Salish Peters is David Loftus. Mayor Renata Matumbo is Kathleen Lee. Astronomy Chief Lawrence is James Lorenz. Jim O'Hara is Slim Sam V.O. Apprentice Tojo is Gwyneth Knight. Eva Hernandez is Lindsay White. Detective Aranya Satang is Sova Rain. Chief Mech Larissa Flint is Lindsay Townsend. The mayor's father is Roger Arnold. Dr. Stone is John Gauntz. Dr. Peters is Ahmad A.J. Judah. Communications Chief Marissa Flint is Virginia Hargrove. Judge Lee is Rachel Pulliam. The announcer is Aaron Simmonsby. Sound effects and music courtesy freesound.org, a soundeffect.com, freepd.com, and audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253. Thanks for listening to 253 Matilda Season 2. If you enjoyed it, please spread the word to anyone who might be interested. We have no advertising budget. We'll be back in 2024 for a third and final season.